In this tutorial, you will learn how to derive the parametric equations for 3D surfaces of arbitrary complexity and view them in Blender. Not all 3D surfaces are born equal. Some are so simple, their equations are elementary. Take the cylinder for example. It is essentially a circle traveling straight up. The formulas are easy as pi, no pun intended. The x and y formulas are the parametric equation of a circle with the radius r. The z equation is a straight line going from 0 to h. Note that the u parameter is responsible for the base shape, while the v parameter is in charge of moving this shape through space. Both parameters vary in the range from 0 to 1. We are going to be using this convention throughout the tutorial. The equation of a sphere is only slightly more complicated, as the circle does not only move up, but also changes radius from 0 to r, and then back to 0. The equation of the torus is very similar to that of the sphere, except this time the circle moves up, down, and then up again, and its radius changes from big radius plus small radius, to big radius minus small radius, and back to big radius plus small radius. But what if our circle is doing something a little trickier, such as spiraling around a larger circle? And what if our basic shape is not a circle at all, but, say, a hypocycloid, which is a curve traced by a point on a circle rolling on the interior of another circle? And what if this hypocycloid is also spinning around its center? And what if it is also oscillating? What would the equation of that monstrosity look like then? Is there a system and method for deriving the equations of these fairly complex 3D surfaces? Actually, there is, and it involves transformation matrices and their multiplication. A matrix with m rows and n columns can be multiplied by another matrix with n rows and p columns. The result is a matrix with m rows and p columns. The entries of the resulting matrix are computed by taking the dot product of each row of the first matrix with each column of the second matrix. Note that matrix multiplication is not commutative. Order of multiplication is important. A square matrix with ones on the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else is called the identity matrix. When an appropriately sized matrix is multiplied by the identity matrix on either side, the result is that matrix. The addition operation is also defined on matrices with the same dimensions. To add two matrices, just add the corresponding entries and place the sum in the corresponding position in the resulting matrix. A matrix with one of the dimensions being one is commonly known as a vector. So what do matrices have to do with our 3D surfaces? Matrices are a great way to describe a transformation, such as a rotation, scaling, or translation. Sequential transformations can be represented by a series of matrix multiplications. To see how a matrix can represent a transformation, let's put aside a 3D world for a while and solve the following geometric problem in a 2D space. Consider a point with the coordinates x and y. This point is rotated around the origin by the angle alpha. Find the new coordinates x prime and y prime. As you can see, the solution is not exactly trivial, and we will not be going over it. If interested, pause the video and peruse it at your own leisure. The final formulas are simple and elegant. And most importantly, these two expressions can be rewritten in a matrix multiplication form. The horizontal vector xy is multiplied by a 2 by 2 matrix with the values cosine of alpha, sine of alpha, negative sine of alpha, and cosine of alpha. The result is the horizontal vector containing the values x prime and y prime. Now, let's consider a situation where the point is first rotated by the angle alpha and then shifted alongside the x and y axis by the values a and b, respectively. The shifting transformation is best known as translation. Our formulas for x prime and y prime change very slightly, they get additional add-ins a and b, respectively. We can rewrite these as two matrix operations, first, a multiplication, and then, an addition. 
Amazingly enough, these two operations can be combined into a single multiplication. For that, the two-element vector xy needs to be expanded to a three-element vector xy and 1. The 2x2 two two matrix is also expanded. It becomes a 3x3 three three matrix, and its rightmost column is filled with all zeros followed by 1 in the lower right corner. The new 3x3 three three matrix contains both the rotation-related sines and cosines, and the translation values, A and B. The result of the multiplication is a three-element vector containing the values x prime, y prime, and 1. There is a matrix for all basic transformations. The most important ones are rotation, translation, scaling, and skewing. The last one is outside the scope of this tutorial. To perform several transformations in a row, the initial coordinate vector needs to be multiplied by the corresponding transformation matrices sequentially. It's time to leave the flat world and move from 2D to 3D. In the 3D world, everything is pretty much the same except that the transformation matrices are now 4x4. There are three separate matrices for the rotations around the x, y, and z axes. The translation and scaling matrices get an extra dimension, but otherwise look identical to their 2D counterparts. To perform a sequence of transformations, the initial coordinate vector containing the values x, y, z, and 1 is multiplied by the transformation matrices one by one. We have developed an online calculator allowing you to specify the initial coordinate vector and an arbitrary number of transformation matrices containing arbitrary formulas based on the u and v parameters. The calculator produces a Python script which generates the resultant 3D surface which can be instantly built and viewed in Blender. This calculator can be found at www.otvinta.com slash matrix.html. The upper portion of the calculator allows you to specify the values for the initial coordinate vector, as well as the number of steps of the U and V parameters. The middle portion is where the formulas for the coordinate matrices are entered. The plus sign adds a new matrix, and the X sign removes the current matrix. The buttons at the bottom are shortcuts for the most common 360-degree rotations around the X, Y, and Z axes based on the U and V parameters. The reset button is a shortcut for turning the current matrix into an identity matrix. The matrices can be moved around in the sequence via dragging and dropping. When you are finished entering the formulas for the matrices, press the Generate Python Script button. The script will appear in the lower portion of the calculator. It can be copied and pasted directly into Blender's text window and executed immediately. The Save button serializes the content of all the boxes into a single text string in JSON format, which can be copied to Notepad and saved to a file. The Load button loads a previously saved JSON string back into the calculator. OK, enough theory. Let's put this calculator to use and create some 3D surfaces. Our first one will be the most basic of them, a sphere. There are only two simple steps involved, a point on the z-axis is rotated 180 degrees around the x-axis to form a semicircular curve, and then this curve is rotated full circle around the z-axis to make a sphere. Now let's enter these transformations in the calculator. On the xyz tab, let's enter 0, 0, 1 for the initial point on the z-axis. We will go with the default numbers for the u and v steps. As mentioned earlier, we will be using the U parameter to model the basic shape, and the V parameter to model its movement in space. The first matrix represents a 180-degree rotation around the x-axis using the U parameter. To speed things up, press the shortcut button marked XU. Since we only need a half-circle rotation, we need to manually replace all occurrences of 2 pi with a single pi. Let's add a second matrix. This one represents a full circle rotation around the z-axis using the v-parameter. Press the shortcut button marked CV. That's it! Press the Generate Python Script button. Copy the generated script to Blender's text window and press Run Script. 
There will almost always be overlapping vertices in those models. To get rid of them, press Tab to enter the edit mode, right-click, and select Merge Vertices by Distance, then press Tab again to exit the edit mode. Now let's model a torus with a small radius of 1 and a big radius of 2. We begin with a point on the x-axis with the coordinates 1, 0, 0. We spin it around the z-axis using the u-parameter to obtain a full circle. We then shift it along the y-axis by 2. Finally, we spin it around the x-axis using the v-parameter to get our torus. Note that when a rotation is followed by a translation, strictly in that order, the two matrices can be combined into one. Now let's model this spiral shape. It is formed by a small circle orbiting 10 times around a point, while the point itself is traveling along a larger circle. The radius of the small circle is 1, the radius of the larger circle is 7, and the distance between the center of the small circle and the center of the orbit is 3. We begin with a circle, as always. We shift it along the y-axis by 3. We spin it around the x-axis 10 times. We shift the whole spinning thing along the y-axis by 7. And finally we spin everything 360 degrees around the z-axis. For a smoother model, we are going to change the default u and v step parameters to 64 and 1000 respectively. In the previous example, the base shape was a stationary circle. In this new example, the base shape is a five-prong hypocycloid that spins around its center and oscillates at the same time. First, let's derive the equation of the hypocycloid using the matrix multiplication approach. Here, the circle with the radius of 1 is rolling on the inside of a circle with the radius of 5. It means that while the center of the small circle makes one full rotation around the center of the big circle, the small circle itself makes five full rotations in the opposite direction. The small circle's center is shifted by four relative to the center of the big circle. We begin with a point 1, 0, 0 on the x-axis. We spin it five times around the z-axis in the opposite direction. It means that 2 pi needs to be replaced with a negative 10 pi everywhere. Then we shift by 4 along the x-axis. And finally we spin around the z-axis. Since this is a 2D curve, we do not use the v-parameter at all. Let's test this formula with the calculator. The u-parameter should be divisible by 5 since it is a 5-prong curve. Let's use 200. The V parameter is not used, so let's set it to 1. To see the created curve, we need to switch to the wireframe mode. This is what the full equation of the surface looks like. The initial vector represents a point on the x-axis with the coordinates 1, 0, 0. The next two matrices create a hypocycloid. The following matrix represents a scaling transformation. 
The scaling factor along the x and y axes is a cosine function in the range 1 to 1 and 1 third. This matrix is responsible for the oscillating effect. Then comes a matrix which makes our shape spin around its center. And finally, this sequence of matrices causes our shape to spiral around a large circle in the exact same way as in the previous example, except now the size of the large circle is 25 and the distance from the center of the shape to the circle is 9. All the previous examples may have given you the impression that the initial vector can only contain static numbers, such as the coordinate 1, 0, 0. But that is not actually so. The initial vector can contain formulas too. This spherical model that made a brief appearance at the beginning of this tutorial is a case in point. Here is how this model was designed. Consider the function of two variables, z equals cosine of 10 pi x plus 10 pi y, divided by 20. Its 3D graph looks as follows. And here is the graph of the function z equals cosine of 10 pi x minus 10 pi y, divided by 20. These two functions can be combined into one using the max function. The graph of this combined function forms a nice square pattern. Now we can wrap this pattern over a sphere. Recall the matrix representation of a regular sphere. Now, instead of the one in the initial vector, we use the slightly modified pattern function in which x and y are replaced by u and v. And with some more small changes to the pattern function, we arrive at the final model. Sculpting with math is fun. Please experiment with the calculator and post your own equations in the comments section below. And this concludes our tutorial. Thanks for watching.